You are listening to Mind Pump, the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. It's a good time here. Look, today we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by our audience. But the first 45 minutes of this episode is an introductory portion. We pull up studies on nutrition, fitness. We talk about current events. And we talk about random things as well. So I'm going to give you a breakdown of today's entire episode. We open up by talking about the purple tear. Ooh. That's right. We're uh, we're in purple tier now here in the Bay Area. That means everything's closed again, yeah. which led us to talk about why black markets exist in the first place. Uh, this might be one of the reasons why yeah, it might be a cause. Certain black markets are starting to prop up here. Then we talk about the controversy around the social media app Parler. More and more controversy around. It's very interesting to us. Then mm. I talk about this new segment uh, on our YouTube channel where we talk about third rail topics. There's a new episode up there right now where I interview. Brett Weinstein. It's not fitness related. Mm, a little um, edgy, huh? Go check it out. Um, then we tease Adam uh, for mispronouncing things. Uh, we've done that many times, but it happened again. Hmm. Uh, then we talk about the pumpkin muffins that we had this morning made with organified protein. It's hard to believe these things are high yeah. in protein. And love. But they're really, really good. By the way, Organifi makes organic supplements, protein powders, green juices, gold juices, some of the best products you'll find anywhere. It's actually the sponsor that's been with us the longest, one of our favorite sponsors. And we have the biggest Organifi discount you'll find anywhere online. So if you want to try out their products, use the Mind Pump discount. Go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump and then use the code Mind Pump for 20% off. Then I address this, the study that's going around talking about how eggs cause diabetes not really. Yeah. Then we talk about eco-friendly products and direct-to-consumer products and companies, which includes one of our sponsors, Public Goods. If you want to shop online, get your stuff directly to your door at wholesale prices, things that are eco-friendly and that mine the chemicals in their stuff. And by the way, they sell everything from uh, cleaning products and dog food and treats and all kinds of stuff at ridiculously good prices. Go get the Mind Pump discount. Uh, this is what you do. Go to publicgoods.com forward slash Mind Pump and then use the code Mind Pump. Then we talk about recycling and how it's probably not happening anymore uh, because China's not buying our stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's just trash now. And then Adam brought up a new series on Amazon Prime called Wayne. Then we got into the fitness questions. So here's the first one. This person wants to know uh, how effective power building is. This seems to be the combination of powerlifting and bodybuilding. So we talk about its benefits and its detriments. Mm. The next question, this person says, what value does a Zercher squat provide? Why can't I just do front squats? What's the difference? The next question, this person wants to know uh, what we think about programs that not only help you look fit, but actually move and be fit. So we talk a lot about our MAPS performance program, which is actually designed exactly for that. That's the one. And then the final question, this person says, look, when you're following a workout program, when is it okay to go off script just to have some fun? Also, uh, all month long, we have put together our most popular at-home workout programs in a bundle and discounted them tremendously. A lot of gyms are closing down again, or you might be afraid to go to the gym right now. It looks like COVID cases are spiking. So here's what we did. We took three of our most popular programs that require uh, little to no equipment. We put them together and put them at tremendous discount. Here's the three programs. Maps anywhere. All you need are resistance bands and a broomstick. We've also put uh, MAPS suspension in there. All you need are suspension trainers. And then we put in MAPS HIT, which is high-intensity interval training, where you're doing 15 to 25-minute high-intense workouts that burn tremendous amounts of calories. By the way, all the programs are at least a couple months long by themselves. In other words, if you got this bundle, you're set up for like five or six months of expert exercise programming complete with video demonstrations, blueprints. We tell you what exercises to do, how many reps to do, everything you need to follow an incredible workout program. So normally, if you got all three programs, you would have to invest $291. But right now, all you have to invest is $99.99. That's it. One payment and you get lifetime access to all three programs. You also get a 30-day money-back guarantee trial, meaning you can enroll in the bundle and you can follow the programs for a month. And if they don't blow your mind, return them for a full refund. If you want more information or you just want to sign up, go to mapsnovember.com. That's the word maps, M-A-P-S, November.com. 
Did you guys get the alert last night? Oh, we are the COVID alert. alert. Yeah, oh. we're we're uh, uh, what are we tier tier or peer? What is it? Seven or purple or some shit? <laughs> oh, wow. what's, what's the purple, purple tier? Is that what it, purple Pink. tier? Yeah, I don't even know what we're it, like, polka dot right now. I don't now. even know Let's what the honest. code the codes are. Yeah, it's the highest level. Yeah, so it's uh, back to lockdowns, yeah. full lockdowns, unless you are an essential Yay! business. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dude, so you know what? This is a what a one. I'm trying to be positive, right? What a wonderful practice in accepting uh, <laughs> things as they what are. You can't control. Yeah. It's like that's that's what's been happening for a, a, a while now, like a year. Yeah. So I think we have another year of this practice. Yeah. Boy, are we going to be stronger at the end? I of this, feel huh? like I'm just in line, uh, and I'm and I'm just waiting, and I'm walking, and then at the end of the line, somebody kicks me really hard in the nuts, <laughs> or, or well, like over and over, or they again. tell you you're in the wrong line. Well, it's yeah. like you got to go wait over there. Actually, <laughs> it's interesting how much like we talk about like you know the depression rising and all the all the bad things that are coming from this, but. What, what would you rather be? Would you rather be uh, here right now in lockdown or here 200 years ago? Mm. Yeah, I know, but you can't do that, dude. Like well, it always, there's always something more fucked up. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, but did you? I'm not. Like everyone, someone comes to you like, man, I'm so sad because I got in a car accident. Or something. Yeah, but you have cancer. <laughs> yeah. All right, I then. mean, hello. You should feel good, <laughs> right? But you don't have. But that. I mean, like we, the things that we can still do from home, the ways that we can still, yeah, connect, you're right. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean. I don't mean that. Yeah, there's, it was there's more ways to look at here, of wars and because of shit like that. Here's I'm just a, talking here, about. Here's a speculation that I'm making right now because and a lot of people don't know this. Okay, so people, when I say black market, people think drugs or illegal weapons or all these terrible things. Black markets literally exist because there's a strong demand and it's a market that is not supported by your government. That's all it means. So if there's a strong enough demand and at the t and your government doesn't support whatever the demand uh, is for, for whatever product or service, then what will end up happening is you'll have a black market. So it can be stuff that we currently deem as bad, like, mm -hmm. again, illegal drugs or, or guns. Or it can be like in the Soviet Union where they had black markets for milk, <clears throat> bread, Nike shoes, uh, Levi's jeans. I mean, I know somebody who, uh, whose friend in, in the Soviet Union literally went to prison because he peddled <clears throat> Levi's jeans on the black market in the Soviet Union. So where am I going with this? Wow. Well, with all these lockdowns, with all these forced businesses that have to shut down, and some businesses have been fucked since the beginning. They're, they haven't been able to really do anything like salons, gyms, gyms. service-oriented type businesses, restaurants, indoor restaurants, totally screwed. What we're going to do is we're going to create very big, vibrant black markets. That's mm. just what's going to it's already It's already happening. Yeah. It's just going to grow and become bigger. Well, and, and the, I think there's there's an uh, interesting conversation here, too, because there's uh, this is not something that is just temporary either. Because once you can get away, once you get away with it, it's, it's a be, button that they're going to constantly push. Well, and just think, too, it's okay, a bell you so can't unring. Put yourself in the shoes of the, of the of the business owner that that goes to the black market, right? That decides that they're going to do this and they they start to do it and they start to make money. And they get away with it. Then COVID goes away, and then we're back to normal. Do they switch back to normal? There's maybe a small percentage of people that do, but I would I would argue that there's a lot of people that shit. I already got away with it when I was when we were when we had to get away with it, and I'm not paying taxes on all this money. Why not keep going? hundred percent. Now here's yeah. here's the things with black markets. Here's the 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 problems with them. Forget the actual product or service that's being peddled on the black market. Let's just pretend that. It just whatever that doesn't matter for now because obviously some products and services, you know, are worse than others. So let's just forget that for a second. What are the dangers of the black market just itself? Okay, so again, let's say you're in the Soviet Union and it's a black market for milk, or let's say you're in a lockdown right now and you're working in the black market for cutting hair. What are the bad part things about that? Well, when you're operating in a black market, there's number one, you don't pay taxes, so tax revenue. Dr dramatically lowers, which can cause some problems. Here's another big problem. Let's say there's a dispute over business or cash or you get ripped off. You can't go to the court. You can't sue someone. Now you can't use any legal measures to dispute your issues or problems. And so what ends up happening is oftentimes it leads to violence. It leads to property damage. Let's say you, get, uh, you, you go get a black market haircut or you go work out at a gym and the guy, you pay the guy three months in advance, and then he doesn't let you in after a week. You can't. It's not like you can go to the court and right. sue him. Right. So, what if you're pissed off? What if you're mad at him? Maybe you'll go and you'll you'll spray paint his gym or do some shit or whatever. And so, what ends up happening is all these black markets are going to cause 
more problems. And then there's a psychological thing that we need to consider. And this is true, by, by the way, as a fact. Remember the whole concept of gateway drugs? Remember they said marijuana is a gateway uh, drug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason why some of that was true was because when people were smoking marijuana, they would tip, they would step over the line into the black market. Now the same dealer that brought them weed mm-hmm. also can sell them cocaine and ecstasy and, and other drugs. So once you start down this path of breaking the law, it's easier to continue to, to break right, the law. That's the case that I'm making. I think that a lot yeah. of people just stay there. I mm-hmm. think that if you, you know, if you already took that risk and then you find out you're okay, like I think that a lot of people yeah, say it's survival. Not only that, but it, when they when the market is open and regulated, let's say they said restaurants stay open, but here's all the guidelines you have to follow, right? You have to take temperature, people wear masks, do whatever. But now they say, no, sorry, totally closed. And then there's a black market for restaurants. They're less likely to follow a lot of those guidelines. They're already breaking the law. So now they're like, whatever, we're just going to do it. <laughs> right. So this could backfire in a really, really big way. And I don't think that they're considering any of that stuff. They're not no. considering any other downstream problems. And I think we need to pay attention because – People are getting. No, the whole- it's a lot easier just to shut everything down and and not realize what kind of backlash and consequences that you know that creates and what other problems that creates. I just wish that there was a way that you know it, it could just be communicated, like the seriousness of all these cases are popping back up. Hey guys, why doesn't everybody you know be extra cautious? And, you know, follow protocols even more strictly, but stay open and, and let people that want to go out, go out. Everybody else that wants to stay home, yeah. stay home. You know, like, I feel like there'd just be a lot more people that would, like, adopt that right away. Well, the cases started spiking, and a lot of the speculation is because is not because necessarily businesses were starting to reopen, but rather because people stopped isolating. Yeah. So a lot of people were like, "Screw it, I'm gonna go have a, I'm gonna go hang out with my my 15." I friends. mean, that's yeah. what I feel that personally totally. like within my circle of family and friends. I mean, mm-hmm. I've noticed that they're like obviously when this you all, can't police it. it well, no, when it's this, impossible. When this all hit originally, everybody I think was pretty much in lockdown. You were nobody was you know mingling with anybody else, family or friends, and now. You've started to see people go like, well, I'm going to see my mom and my cousin and my aunt. That's yes. it. And then oh, I'm going to see my mom, my cousin, my aunt, and my brother-in-law. Like, And it's just like it slowly has grown since then to where I feel like now most people are – they're still abiding by the rules as far as when they go places – but as far as like who they're interacting with, that's I think that's substantially grown. At least in the circle of people that I know, that's what. Even the ones that I think were the most, you know, staunch about not seeing anybody, mm-hmm. even they have. Like I, my brother, which uh, ironically, my brother-in-law, who's one of the ones who got COVID, he wouldn't even answer his door to like his mom. His mom came over to, like bring him food. This is know. before he got COVID. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, but okay. This is before he even got COVID. So before he even got COVID, he was like, wouldn't answer his door, wouldn't talk to anyone in the family. Like if even if just like the small and immediate family got together, like he wasn't coming around. So he was like that big time. Well, he ends up getting COVID anyways. He catches it through a girlfriend that he was the only, like one of the only people he was seeing caught it. And, and since then, and time has gone by, like, now, you know, he's around, you know, 15, 20 different family and friend, you know, friends that I know of personally. And I don't know what else he's done besides that. Uh, you so. know, that makes me think of something. Uh, do you guys think at some point, if this keeps going, 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 that at some point healthy people are going to go and just try to get it? Be like, fuck well, it, yeah. so, I'm going to get it over like so chicken pox. That's part of what I think is happening too is that, you know, so there's definitely, there's definitely obviously a percentage of people. And I see this too within my, my circle. I have people that have, have lost somebody. To COVID. Mm-hmm. So if you have somebody who you knew, um, you know, within a person or two away from you that that died from it, you tend to be a little more like freaked out about totally. it. But, but then the the opposite is true too. Mm-hmm. If you're somebody who has one or two, or like in you know, my case, I have like six or seven people that are pretty close to me that have all had it, and they all and they're all they had it for like a day, and they're all unhealthier than I am, mm. and they all were fine, and they had it, and then it was it's gone. You know, maybe the worst I think out of those people were you know taste they lost taste for like thirty days. Um, but as far as getting through the the, uh, the flu like symptoms, it was relatively fast and 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 less in comparison to other things they've had. So then you're more like relaxed because you have somebody who you, you've couple people now you've known who's had it, and you're like, oh okay, they're way unhealthy compared mm-hmm. to me. And so I think you have two things going on there where you've still got some people 
who know somebody who's passed and they're, they're a little more scared, but more and more people. And there's obviously the death rate is very, very low. So there's a higher percentage of chance you know somebody or a few yeah. people who have had it, but then have been fine from it. And so now that you've been cl this close to it, you're starting to go like, okay, it's not that scary. And so mm. I think more people- Do you are know like how that. long it took before, like after the Spanish flu, like how long it took people to then sort of interact and get back to kind of business as usual? Yeah, I don't, but I imagine in those days- A lot longer, you would think, yeah. just because of the way stuff travels. Yeah, oh, and yeah. people die, right. like well, so yeah, many that people. That was a vicious one. I, you know, I think people back then, it was terrible, but I think they ex accepted things a little differently. And because- mm -hmm. You didn't have the mass media. What you what your base? Well, and they had to work. It, not only that, but you're you're yes, and you're also mostly you're exposed to the people around you. So, to use that as an example, let's imagine that mass media the way we have it now doesn't exist. Okay, so the only co you you've heard of COVID, right? You've right. heard about it, right? But really, the only point of reference you have are the people you know, right? So and of all the people that I know personally. I know two people, two distant family members that got it. So in my mind, if that yeah. was all I knew, mm -hmm. I'd be like, eh, it's not that bad. I only know two people. Well, right, especially right. You know if the two people you know- went, got, We're got, okay. Yeah, we're okay. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it was like that up until it was, Nana was just terrible. Now you're just seeing yeah, shit go crazy. Yeah. You know. But I know many times, <laughs> many times people have thought the end of the world was coming. I mean, I'm pretty sure when the bubonic, bubonic plague happened, oh, yeah. I mean, that's one third of the whole- all of Europe died. Well, I, yeah, and I remember Ebola, like uh, how scared we all were. Because that's like one of those where immediately you get like really detrimental symptoms. Dude, and, you like, bleed out you of your die, face. <laughs> like, like almost like within a few days. So it's like this is a different thing. You know, it's yeah. like a lot of people like make it through okay, but then, you know, every now and then there's somebody that dies and then it just kind of it's also just freaks people out. It's just creating this situation because it's stress and there's and things that a lot of us haven't experienced before. It's just ripe for conspiracy theories oh, and just paranoia. And the latest one I heard, if, here's the latest one I heard. Okay. And, but I mean, all conspiracy theories, there's a piece of it that you could be like, huh, that might make a little sense. Here's the next one. The next one is that, that big tech and big media really want people to be scared as hell because companies like Amazon and Google, and they crush Oh my god! And they god. take out their competition. Tech uh, businesses are killing it right now, you know. In ter and I think that's where my concern is, just about all of the small businesses. Like they're just like disappearing right in front of our eyes. There's yeah. just, there's just no more competition now. Yeah. Tech, tech, and direct to consumer. Yes, it, those two are just. But here's the thing, though: it, it, is that the natural evolution, anyways? Yeah. It's just accelerating it. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, we'll yeah. see if you it can goes make back. an argument for that. Right. And I know that. I mean, that sounds that sucks, harsh to say that. Like, if you have a, a close family member or friend that has, like, a small mom pop shop, like, those those places are getting killed, right? We're in small towns. But, you know, it, it, is it the natural evolution of how things were going to go anyways that most people were going to be ordering on Google and Amazon? And mm. Well, I had this conversation, too. I, I think I was on a podcast where it was like, we've been talking since day one about like to trainers, like start considering putting everything that you've done online. Start right. really like putting your entire uh, library of content like out there, put it out there. That's where business is going and that's where it was all going. Uh, and then this just really like, you know, put a wedge in that. Yeah. yeah. Although I'll say this, uh, I know a hand, at least a handful of trainers who they trained in gyms or personal training studios. And when this all happened, they converted to going to people's homes and training them, and they're doing excellent. They're yeah, crushing. I love that. Yeah, yeah, their businesses have all exploded because you know their top client. Because here, there's a bit of a bias, right? People who hire trainers tend to take their fitness a little bit more seriously and don't mind investing a little bit more time and money. Yeah. So if you have, you know, 15 clients that are training with you at your gym and they're all paying you 70 bucks an hour, and then the gym is closed. You have to imagine at least eight of them would be willing to pay another twenty bucks an hour for you to come to their house. Well, I think oh, yeah. it's even it's more the smartest than, thing you can do right now. I think it's more than that. I mean, how many of your guys' clients train with you more for the social reason than they did even for the totally. results they got? So, I mean, that's that's a big part for a lot, a lot of people that are already spending that kind of money. Uh, a big portion of them aren't just interested in 
losing five pounds or building muscle, you, they've built relationships with their with yeah. them. And so it's very important, right? And now you're in this lockdown. Everybody's kind of sad, depressed. You don't see anybody. Like, and then you have the option to. Then you have Justin come over. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> like, yeah, the parties his, here. His mask yeah. and his great <laughs> his cakes. You know, say <laughs> come over and yeah. does yoga with you. Yeah. Like that's freaking wow. amazing. You just have Downward to wear the dogs. Everything. You just, <laughs> you just yeah. have to wear these shorts. That's it. And then I'll let you train me yeah. in my house. Anyway, just keep it entertaining, dude. Yeah. A lot of news going around uh, Parlor, that that social media app that I, I've brought up now a couple times. Yeah, I see everybody jumping over there. Oh, so tons of people are jumping over there. And so like clockwork, the media now is reporting that it's <laughs> it's a haven for right-wing uh, wing extremists and it's a, it's a haven for conspiracy yeah. theorists yeah. and it's this and that. Because we can't control them. <laughs> yeah, and this is a threat to democracy. You know, meanwhile, they're on, you know, CNN or Fox or whatever, which are, those are echo chambers, you know, in and of themselves. Oh my God. Have you seen that little news reel where they like, they all obviously had the same script where they're talking about, yes. this is a threat to democracy. Yes. You see everybody in like every news station have the same exact, it's pretty yeah. creepy. Parlor was predictable. We, uh, we talked about this years ago when we were talking about how uh, people, uh, that, uh, it's, people are more and more going into their silos and uh, there's this perception that if you if your views are not the mainstream or if you're conservative or even libertarian that you may be censored on the big platforms at some point enough people are going to feel yeah. that way and they're going to go some there's a market yeah. demand you don't have to be an extremist you could just yeah. be like a rational person that's like i don't believe in all this censorship yeah you know like there's there's a space for that and that's where that has some appeal to but me. i i'll say this i think just wait till they get real big and then they're probably of course gonna start. <laughs> yeah be, it's i mean come on it's just for now yeah, yeah. I, it's a hundred percent cnn and fox i mean it's that's old media it's just Dude. now new media. Yeah, this the same is new shit. media. I mean, we totally. just talked about this the other day, right? How we, you know, news networks report on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, you you, you turn on the TV to watch the news and 50% of their news they're reporting is a tweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, that's how we get our information now. And so, of course, it's obvious to me that we'd have a Instagram and a Twitter that represents a kind of CNN type of point of view. And the natural progression would be a one that's a Fox point of view It will eventually emerge. And you, I think Parler is that. You know, it's interesting. Right. A, a lot of people on there are people who are in nutrition, health and wellness whose views have gotten blocked uh, or shadow banned on Instagram. So like carnivore diet advocates, wow. people who are anti, uh, you know, like GMO, believe it or not, uh, are moving over there because they've been censored. People who question Western medicine. So a lot of people in, in the wellness space do that. Yeah, so like anti-vaxxers and stuff like oh, that. They're, 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 those for sure, but I guarantee they'll be, they'll be censored on Parlor too. I think that's a, that's a topic that no matter where you go, people are going to try and shut you down. But uh, just wellness people uh, who are moving over there because like Rob Wolf, for example, who's not that controversial. I never thought he was that controversial. No, I mean, he just advocates for meat. Yeah. Like, nothing and, crazy. And he gets, he gets, uh, you know, shadow banned all the time. So he's moved over there. So, I think this is just, this is a market. You're going to see more of this kind of stuff. You're going to see yeah. more. There's too many agendas out there fighting each other. You yeah, know? it's yeah. just it's so obnoxious. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of which, um, you know, uh, I am a, I am very interested to see how that little segment I did is going to do uh, on YouTube. Oh, the third it. rail one. Third rail. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll do, see. Do, 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 do. When yeah. is it? When is that going live? Um, as of the recording of this episode, I well, as the dropping of this episode, it should be up. Oh, wow. So it should be up. Um, and essentially what it is is uh, I love having controversial conversations with people that are not fitness related. Mind Pump really isn't the place for that because it's a more of a fitness health podcast. So it's a segment that we're right now just going to put on our YouTube podcast channel where I'm going to talk to people about that kind of stuff. Yeah. So the first uh, the first guest was Bright, uh, Brett uh, Weinstein. Um, so, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see what the. What did you think of the the? Because I wasn't there for the conversation. So what did I you thought think? it was good. I had a great conversation. It was only a few days though after my son was born. So I'm gonna watch it and just I don't know how fried I was. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so we'll see just how I was on pure adrenaline on camera. Yeah, we'll see how I was. Uh, speaking of yeah. people like that, by the way, Adam. You know you've been pronouncing someone's name wrong for like three years. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Adam, Adam Atler. 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 No, 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 no. Alter. Alter. That's uh, why you even got us doing it. I know, bro. 
<laughs> yeah, he was just on Joe Rogan. That's why I was altered. I'm like, saw, Wait a minute. I saw that he was on Joe Rogan. Is it really? It's it's A L T E R, yeah, not A T L E R. No, maybe, no, yeah, maybe that's why he's come on our show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to fuck that guy. Talks that might, about, says yeah. my name wrong. Yeah, that might be why. Bro, watch a gar- guarantee. Watch all the people touting that now. I mean, that shit. I was saying that what four years ago. You were, and, oh yeah. And you guys were making fun of me and stuff like that. Now that he's on Joe Rogan, I guarantee everybody's going to be talking. Just ahead about of your time. Yeah. Dude. Well, I mean, I think it's. Uh, you know what? You know what he said on Rogan. Mm. He he thinks that the this kind of forced <laughs> lockdown situation. Is gonna. He hopes at least that it's gonna make people um, kind of question their addiction to technology because a lot of us feel forced to be on it. So maybe mm. that'll change our perception. Oh yeah, that's an interesting point of view because um, I've I've felt that myself mm-hmm. personally uh, more than ever. Like I, I mean, I was already talking about it, right? So I've been talking about it for a long time. Uh, but man, when you're you know you're forced to be indoors like that, there there is only so much to do. And when you've got a television and a phone, mm-hmm. it's really easy to just you know switch over onto that and then get sucked in. So um, yeah, no, I find myself uh, like really paying attention to how much I'm tending to go that direction. It's tough, dude. And yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I can, and, and we're aware, right? So we've talked about it, we've read the books on it, and so and we've shared about this. So imagine how many people are unaware and like how long does it take them like going down that rabbit hole before they realize like oh shit well there's this psychological phenomena that happens there's a name for it i'm pretty sure where people who enjoy doing a particular thing once it becomes their job Mm. they stop enjoying it as much Uh, it happens to athletes a lot too yes that's exactly Mm -hmm. uh i don't know what the name of this what it's called uh, but they talk about it in psychology but essentially because you feel like you have to just the perception of that changes the the enjoyment of it so mm-hmm. it's like you love doing something but now that you feel even though you're not necessarily forced but you feel forced yeah yeah, yeah so so th- that's what he was speculating about uh people's using you know their phones and technologies that because we may be perceiving like that we're forced to do it that maybe now people are going to question their addiction to technology yeah they speculate a little bit too about how people might start moving and be more interested in virtual reality and I haven't even I haven't even given that a thought because I, I just feel like that's still kind of something that's far uh, from where we're at right now. But I guess it's it's made like lots of moves lately. Like they've gotten way better with it. The experience is is totally like catching up to something that like people are like, wow, I, th- I feel like immersed. I mean, in how, this environment. how much does it feel like we're right on the cusp of that? You know, it's of, like right on the threshold of, of what I've been saying of that we're going to have the plugged or the unplugged. So you have like if Adam Alter is saying things that, okay, we are on the cusp of people starting to figure out how addicted they are. I agree and I disagree. I agree there's a portion of self-aware people. You have like Amish people, but with technology. <laughs> you have, you have, <laughs> yeah. you have a, a definitely a portion or a percentage of the people out there that are self-aware and recognize that and don't want that for themselves. And then you have another portion that are almost oblivious to it, don't yeah. give a shit. And then VR comes in and then you can yeah. plug in and now this this virtual- like, Forget about my body, just plug me in. And this virtual world ends up being just as enjoyable or more enjoyable for them than the reality is. Oh, I tell you what, the minute you can have sex in VR, we're screwed. We're all, we're all, I'm telling you. I thought you can. It's, it's already there. It's no, no, no. Yeah. I mean, when it's like legit, like, you know. Well, it, how does it get more legit than, like, don't they have, they, they already have the thing where you can, goggles on, you can put like a thing on yourself and then, <laughs> yeah. and then watch, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I saw yeah. that. I mean, what do you want? What else, What's more real than that? Well, where <laughs> for, it feels, virtual reality. Where I'm, it yeah. feels fully immersed, where you feel like uh, you're like in there. Uh, player one. Yeah, something like you, that. Like you got a oh, whole, you have a the whole, suit, the whole body suit. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, got to be coming. The haptic suit Dude, where it like does things to your yeah, <laughs> warm, warms up your core temperature. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. And then you're now we're screwed. Once you can get in there and have sex, forget it. Oh, yeah. Nobody's going to do anything anymore. That's what I think. I think it's, we're going to be totally screwed. Not everybody. It'll, there'll be a portion of people that are like actually want to go do something with their day than like have sex on virtual reality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, have, I have a little more faith in humanity. Well, than that. in between. <laughs> Sounds like nobody's ever coming well, out after that. Once you can yeah. fuck on virtual reality, then, <laughs> then pretty much we've solved know. everything. <laughs> I mean, there, there's definitely a big portion because you saw like World of Warcraft. You know how like popular that game was? That game was so popular. People would like wear diapers. Uh, because they didn't want to get up and like miss anything. That's true. What? Yeah, yeah. yeah there were people that were actually. This would, is not true. Yes, it is. I'm people, serious. People were playing a video game so much. They don't want to get up. They would put on adult diapers and yes. then 
soil themselves while they're soil playing. themselves just to keep uh, you know staying in that world. Yep. No. Yeah. 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 That's come on. That's real? crazy. That's, that's real true. news. That's what Adam uh, uh, Alter said. Yeah. Oh, I, can't, I can't even say his name right. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just... I can't even say his name right, dude. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's ruined us. <laughs> Screwed me up. Hey, yeah. did you guys try the the treats that what that? Oh uh, she, yes. What are those? Jerry just made them. those spongy and delicious. Those were bomb. Pull those up, Doug. Those were the banana. She just sent. She sent the recipe. Banana over pumpkin. The, uh, maybe the best thing so far. I tell you what. I were mean, they made with the with the organic, gold juice? No, no, no. They're Organifi uh, protein. I got it. Oh Doug, wow! You, so did she put it on there? Yeah. Have you tried it yet, Sal? No, oh, no. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna tell you right now because she sent yeah, it. Here it is. Pumpkin some noise. Okay. Pumpkin. Oh wait a minute. This is. Hold on a second. No, they're bomb. How does she? How does she do that? Okay, listen. That. They're pumpkin. Banana. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's like it's yeah. like squid. little crust on the top. Yeah, okay. it's nice. They yeah. can't see that. Pumpkin banana bread. Uh, protein muffins. So, no way. So it's got listen graham cra that's graham cracker crumbs on there. Like that's oh, one. that's what four that scoops of uh, the Organifi uh, vanilla protein powder. Fifteen ounces of pumpkin. Uh, three overripe bananas, two large eggs, baking powder, and then some pumpkin pie spice. I would never know. And then a little bit of uh, topped with walnuts. If you served this to me and didn't tell me that there was protein powder, I would never know. Oh my yeah. god! Wow, so, that's really good. Isn't no, that that's bomb? Really good. Did she get it off the Organifi website? Yeah, I'm pretty sure she did. I, I got to ask her if that's where she got it or not from, but I mean, it's it's super bomb. They have a lot of good um, recipes on there. I'm glad that she's doing this because yeah, this might have been one. It was she up to us. I know. <laughs> yeah, <I'd be. laughs> hey, I made a protein shake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we right. heard your idea, right? It was with raw uh, eggs and raw uh, eggs and coconut water. <laughs> oh, it's all. Oh, about, it makes it sweet. It's like, all about cool. utility for me. Yeah, bro, that's nothing. When I was a kid trying to gain size. I used to make uh, tuna fish or chicken breast shakes. That's oh so gross. Uh -huh. No joke. Can I'm trying to imagine go, his breath. Oh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> what a shake. Hey guys. Uh, uh. I think it's. I think the reason why it smells the way it <laughs> the does now is it's reminiscent yeah. of that dude still from that long ago. All right, you guys. <laughs> Come on. Stop fucking stop picking on me. <laughs> Adam takes it another level. I know. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. Ball joke. Uh, <laughs> ball joke. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I was going to say, I've been getting it. the well. Oh, yeah, 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 it is. No, did you see that Justin did an old throwback post of him and I? when? Dude, uh, you guys were... I know. Handsome. I, I had to pick one where Adam was at his handsomest, you know, that, that way he wouldn't get all mad at so me. So this is a, this is, this nobody, is, every, all the comments, nobody. This isn't Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I didn't even like respond. So like, here's yeah. what, here's what's happened. And uh, Adam, you just be honest. Okay. You be honest with me. Okay. Oh God, oh God. You and I both have definitely declined in our attractiveness. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Why? Justin and Doug have gotten better looking. I agree. What the fuck? I agree. You, you got to start low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's only one you way to go. You guys got the wrong strategy. You went way high and then you're declining. We, we peaked. That's just yeah, not yeah, a that's yeah. not a good strategy. I land I landed Jessica real quick with yeah. 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 I don't yeah. think I could get her now. Yeah. <laughs> I was all basing on personality. Yeah. yeah. Dude. And now Corey's like, that's whoa, a, you're changing. Yeah. Hey, yeah. speaking of food, did you guys see the egg study that's making the, the rounds right now? Mm -mm. God, media, I swear, is Sometimes I feel like media is just a, are they demonizing? They're just it? idiots. That's what I. That's what. I, and then again, it's our own fault because we click on everything that's stupid. So, study comes out and it says uh, eating just one egg a day increases your diabetes risk by sixty percent. What? That's what the study says, right? Wow. Now here's the deal. It's not How a they study. Make that association. It's not a study. It's observational, meaning they are putting together correlations. And what they did is they looked at. Uh, I think it was in Australia, if I'm not mistaken. I should pull it up. Was it China? Okay. I don't know if the study was done in China or if it was Chinese people in Australia. Let me double check hmm. and see. Um, so they took, so they, they, they looked at a bunch of Chinese people either in China and Australia. And when they started eating an egg a day, they saw an increase in the risk of diabetes. And so they connected the two. Here's what they're not telling you. They didn't control for anything else. And when people from, especially from other cultures, start to adopt a Western diet mm -hmm. that usually includes eggs in the morning, but what does it also typically include? Pancakes. Bunch of, yeah, a <laughs> bunch of processed food garbage. Right. right. So they're trying to connect eggs to the diabetes because that's the crazy thing that would stand out in the study, but they didn't talk about any other- That they know, had with it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's so again stupid. more agendas. It just seems so much like there's a massive agenda to to make any kind of like meat or poultry or any kind of like make demonize it some way so they can sell you like whatever like fake burger. It's funny how much I mean we're all guilty of this too of like using studies as truth. I was trying to explain this to Katrina and Sal, you know this better than I do. What? What is the percentage of a study even being replicated? Isn't oh, it single digits? It depends. Uh, I think behavioral or yeah, psychological studies are terrible. Okay. Nutritional studies can be really hard because so many of them are these survey-based studies. And the reason for that is it's really hard to- Tease to, everything out, to well, lock people up for five months and say you're only eating this way. You or know how expensive that would be? Right, you know, right. Take 200 people, put them in a lab, control all factors- and then tease out what's causing what, impossible. And so instead they have people fill out surveys. And in this case, in this study, when you're studying uh, you know, Chinese adults, they typically will eat a Ch their culture's diet, right? But when they start to adopt Western-style diet, that typically will include some kind of beef or more beef and eggs, <laughs> maybe more milk, and then all the other garbage yeah. uh, that comes along with it. So yeah, their health is going to decline. It's not because of the eggs. Yeah, it's because of the, all the other. Well, that, I mean, that, that was my point, right? That I was trying to to. I think I told Katrina it was like a single digit percentage of like that that actually can be replicated exactly the same. Yep. Like studies, mm -hmm. like that's what's so crazy. But yet we 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 tout all these as truth. Mm -hmm. You know that this is the this is always oh, this study came out. Therefore, this is the truth. When in reality, that study can rarely ever can ever even be duplicated. That just goes to show you how much of a a, a variance there is in everything that we. Yeah, that and then you just get camps to cherry pick whatever parts of the the study they like the most in order to sell whatever the hell idea they want to sell well, you. Well, back in the day, coffee was uh, associated, correlated with cancer. So when they would do studies, these same kind of studies, observational, they found that people who drank coffee got cancer more often. And so some people said, coffee is bad for you. In fact, when I was a kid, coffee was bad for you. Nobody told, nobody said coffee yeah. was healthy. Yeah, no, no, it was, totally. It was bad for you. It was unhealthy. It happened when we were yeah. trainers, like in the in the late oh. '90s and early 2000s. Black when it coffee really and cigarettes. That yeah. was like the thing. That's why, because they didn't, because people who drank lots of coffee in the '50s, '60s, like '70s, truckers. and '80s smoked a lot of cigarettes too. Yeah, but they said coffee causes cancer. Well, that's like any. That's what I'm saying. Like any of these studies, it's so hard to say. Like, and we know how much other things like sleep and behaviors and stress and relationships all affect your health. So it's like you can do all this stuff about, oh, people that follow these macros or this or, or this is what we think happens when we know there's these all these other variables that play such a huge role in how your body responds. It's like so hard to say for sure. It is, and you have to look at how behaviors, uh, like for example, if you look at studies on uh, vitamins, people who take vitamins tend to be Healthier. have better health, yeah. but we don't necessarily know if it's because of the vitamins or because healthy people who, who value their health and exercise and diet tend to also take yeah. vitamins, right? Doug's so, got a fact for us. Yeah, here. I have a kind of a theory here. So this study was... Uh, done between 1991 and 2009. Mm. And the first year that McDonald's went to China was in 1990. Oh, so you think it's like egg McMuffins? Well, so I was in <laughs> China. I went to China like three times in the 90s. And there's McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, Pizza Hut, everywhere. Yeah. So all of our best. Is that factored into this study as well? Mm. Mm. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Could be. Yeah. Because if you eat an egg McMuffin, there's your egg. <laughs> yeah. With your with your hash browns from there. <laughs> but yeah. they're cutting out the McMuffin. I heard they're bringing bucket. the McRib back. The McRib? Yeah. No, they aren't. Yeah, they are. They yeah. always do. It's like yeah. they bring it back once like, a year. Like for 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 a while. Can I tell you that the McRib <clears throat> disappointment disappoints me every time for whatever reason? Every time I have. To I've get never one. had it. You've had it. Oh, I've, I've never. I've, had ne it. I've never had it. It's processed. It pork meat. Looks, yeah. Boy, you are the undercover fast food eater that we don't know about. Yeah, yeah. you. Uh, you know what's going on here? Ambassador of health. None. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to take that sash back. <laughs> I feel like you're gonna have to I'm too. snatch it. <laughs> you know, we've talked about like fast food stuff lately. You're like, you've been the. the so I'm only, I had fries. You can call me <laughs> obesity of health now, nowadays. <laughs> Did you see that? Uh, we there was a video that the, that uh, Rachel posted of of like one of my fit tips or whatever couple comments under because I was talking about food like yeah. food order and if you oh, eat yeah, this yeah, order yeah. couple comments underneath like looks like Sal's been eating everything lately huh uh, yeah. <laughs> thanks yeah. guys people love to pile it on <laughs> it just yeah. Makes, yeah. make me feel really good <laughs> oh dude welcome to the club yeah, yeah. yeah. hey <laughs> speaking speaking of companies we're talking about camp tech companies and companies that are doing really well with the shutdowns I gotta imagine companies that mail you said direct to consumer yep 
Uh, are you following along with our sponsor, Public Goods, and see how well? Oh yeah, crushing right now. They have to. Oh, be, right? well, good. They, especially them because they. I mean, for a lot of reasons. One, they're like the uh, you know online direct to consumer Costco type of brand, so you're getting like these wholesale wholesale type prices. They offer so much stuff too, so it's like all your household goods that everybody needs anyways. Think of things like cleaning supplies and all that stuff, which has all gone through the roof everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then to be able to get uh, wholesale type prices through them, yeah, no, they're they're crushing. And then their model of like, you know, less chemicals, yes. less packaging, you know, very, very, you know, green minded. That's got to be that's got to be one of the factors as to why they're doing. Yeah, so it's well. interesting. I've been very conscious of that, like limiting a lot of like uh, you know plastic uh, packaging and like getting rid of like a lot of the uh, uh, chemicals in the house. And it's you know you, you want to think that you, obviously you're not going to feel that initially, but over time, I feel like I've I've felt the difference. Of well, that. this is mm-hmm. how I've always felt, and and now that we are seeing brands like Public Goods come out, which are making it more affordable. Like it was different when it was like. Okay, you know, buy this, you know, uh, brand of Windex, which has got all this chemicals and crap in it, and it costs, you know, a dollar or something. And then if I want to go get like the organic version that doesn't have anything, that doesn't work, it's like seven dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't work very well, and it's like seven dollars. Water, water, and lemon essence. In yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. So things like that. It's infused. Just like ten right. years ago, that's what it was like. So, and 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 that's something like okay, it's not like I'm drinking my Windex, so I'm not really worried about stuff like that. Speak but for yourself, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now, now though, that you're starting to see these it's companies uh, emerge. That are that are offering these types of products for for reasonably priced, and then it's like, hey, what? Is, it's not a big leap for me to change my dishwasher soap or my laundry detergent right. and make it healthier and better, especially if the price point is relatively close to what these on brands that are using all these chemicals. So, yeah, I think that's what's happening. Is I think more and more people, even if you're not. You know, you know, running around with a tinfoil hat, afraid that all no, these things. Just are think gonna... about your skin health, your hair. Yeah. You know, yeah. all, like all the. You know, I just think people don't consider that even. Like it's never mm-hmm. been something they'd even think about. Speaking of waste, did you guys know that uh, recycling is not what it used to be nowadays? You guys know this? Well, it's been that way for a long time. For, as oh, far as the waste, oh, it's not, we're not even, throw it all together. We're not right? even able to use that, like half of it, dude. So we used to sell a lot of our plastic and cardboard and stuff to China, and they would buy it off of us, and so that's how we would recycle. Essentially, they'd take it and use it. Nobody what, wants it. Right? Do do? Nobody's buying it anymore, yeah, and it costs so it costs more money and is more wasteful to to do the recycling thing or whatever. So what they do with all your recycling is they throw it away. This is what they do now, yeah. except for I think aluminum, and I want to say glass. Everything else is essentially, yeah, and I'm, I'm not making look sure. in metal. Yeah, metal. Look this up. I'm not making this up. It's almost a waste of time now to recycle so many. Uh, I all think the it's stuff. been this way for a while. It's a, I've heard that before. So sad. I showed Jessica, yeah. and she was so angry because she's like a stickler. Like oh. if I throw something in the wrong thing, oh, yeah, we're I gonna get a fight. For a while. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, especially this, going to the dump. You know, it's like you, you, there's only like few th- items that they even care to to recycle for you anymore. Mm, yeah, yeah. No, that's how I know because Jessica got mad at me so many times. I was like, oh. well, that's another thing. And I like, looked it up. Like, I'm like, I've mm. seen more and more brands doing what Public Goods does too, which I think is also really cool. Is when you buy the first initial thing, like whether it be like the you know window washing stuff, d- detergent. You get the original bottle. Yeah, you get the original, and then going forward, they send you, you refill. Yeah, yeah, it's the refills. I always know. thought that I always thought that was a good idea. I always thought to myself a company should do that because it would save them money. Mm-hmm. Um, it would probably save the consumer money. Right. And it's way L- less, less waste. Way less waste because yeah. you just reuse the same container and now you have a, a bag or whatever full Recycle, of your soap. Recycle, reduce, reuse, yeah. join the loop. You guys remember, you guys remember, you guys remember um, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you guys yeah. remember that? Flushing toilets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're not supposed to flush if it's pee? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, hey, I got uh, I got a, a new show for you, Justin. It's called um, Wayne on Prime. Yes. Yes. Did I you watched I watched one episode oh. of Wayne. I've gotten a couple recommendations. Then you said that over text and I was like, all right, I'm going to watch this cuz so it is sounds it? awesome. So I you like did you like it? I did. It was, I knew you would like it. Yeah, dude. It was uh yeah, it was right up my alley. It was it was kind of like like at first, it was a little off putting because you know this oh, guy. Oh, it's very different. This guy is just like comes out and he gets his ass kicked. And uh, anyway, I don't want to ruin the plot of it or anything, but it's kind of cool. It's like he's sort of this anti hero. He kind of is trying to do the right thing, but he's in this, uh, you know, really uh, sort of a shitty situation. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a. I, you is he like, a superhero? So, did you like? Do you no. like? No. Do you like the writing of Deadpool? Yeah. 
No, you like like that, that kind of humor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's dark humor. It's that. Yeah. It's very it's dark. Great. Very dark humor. Also got some seriousness to it. It's, it reminds me of the flow of watching Deadpool. Like, you know, one minute you're like, you're really into it. Great action scenes, fighting crazy. Then it makes you laugh. And it's kind of like sick, dark humor. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's like very sarcastic because the circumstances around them are so bad. Mm. You know how you get like when somebody like is going through hell and they're just like, yeah, well, I guess this is happening. Mm. You know, it's got that kind of vibe. It's a high school boy who has gone and I'll share this without ruining the show at all it's a high school boy who is uh, like ju- like the unlikely hero because he's he, his dad is dying of cancer his mom fucking left him when he was a kid yeah. he's poor as shit gets beat up and stuff like that so he grows up in this rough ass neighborhood but he's like tough as nails yeah and he has this chip on his shoulder about like protecting the like the underdog, the kids yeah. that get bullied at school, the people that get. Oh, I like on. it already. Exactly. Oh, yeah, oh, I like it. It's yeah. a great story. He never bro. lies. Like he can't lie. Yeah, yeah, he all, yeah. Like, he's yeah. like, but then he's like kind of like this badass a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he it, takes a beating, but then he also will will give it to guys that are yeah, like, and it's then it's bullying kinda, other people, and it's got Deadpool's kind of graphics. So like the fights are like kind of brutal looking. It's not. Oh like wow. A, yeah. Maybe yeah. I'll watch that with my son. Yeah. No, yeah. you guys will like it. You okay. guys will definitely. I right away I thought of Justin for sure. I know would love it, but yeah, I think everybody. I'm trying awesome. to. I'm trying to find something to do with him because I'll. I'll. This. He's a teenager now, so he did this to me the other day, and I realized how much it hurt my feelings. He was like, we were talking. He's like, oh, Black Mirror. Did you watch that episode? And we're going back and forth. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, have you seen all the seasons? He goes, no, I haven't seen. I only saw the first season. I'm like, dude, let's watch one tonight, just you and I. And he's like, nah. <laughs> just no. No, uh, no reason. Just my no. heart, dude. Yeah. That's kind of lame. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, do it's I like force the, him? It's like, it's I'm like, like, you're gonna watch that shit with it's, me. Too. That sounds like the the, pop, oh, the popular, the nerdy kid asks the popular kid to hang out. Yeah. And he's like, nah, I'm he's, cool. He's like, nah, nah I'm cool. I feel I'm your cool. pain. He's like, now nah, I'll, I'll watch YouTube. I'm like, fuck. It <laughs> <laughs> hurt me, dude. We, were, we went for a walk the other day with the uh, with uh, the baby. You know, push him in the stroller, or whatever. And uh, I'm giving him hugs and stuff. I'm a very f- physically affectionate, yeah, yeah, father. And I can tell he's a little bit uncomfortable, which just makes me pour it on even oh, more. Sure. Yeah. And I told him, I said, listen, kid, I said, if I, I know you don't like working out that much, I said, but that's your only option to fight me off because I'm going to hug and kiss you and squeeze you. <laughs> yeah. And the more you push me away, I said, I promise you, you keep pushing me away, I'm going to pick you up and hold you like a baby in my arms and walk down the street. <laughs> And so he's like, ah, <laughs> I got to get strong. And I will do that. I will literally pick him up, hold him, and then uh, kiss him in front of everybody. Man, yeah. I swear, that's, this day's coming, right? Everyone keeps telling me. Because right now, Max is still going through this phase of, like, he's so attached to me, dude. It's And I'm trying to be like this. I mean, I am. I, I'm a very present father, right? And I do a lot of things with him. And so I'm trying to, like, suck it all up because everyone yeah. says, like, it's only a matter of time before, like... You're just not cool. Yeah. He's, uh, you're not cool. He doesn't want to do anything with you anymore. Dude, and I'm like, yep. it's so hard to, like, I guess, we're where I'm at in it to to even see that or comprehend that. Right now, it's like, I have to, like, sneak out of the house to get out of the house. It sucks. I can't even, like, go say goodbye to him because if he sees me... And I'm leaving, like he'll ah, he'll make a big old deal. About Eat it up, dude. Yeah. Eat it up. Every they're... time I get home, my boys attack me like yeah. clockwork. You just that's, wait. That's, you know, they want, still... yeah, dude. They want to wrestle, and it's like if I don't do that, you know, it's gonna stop, and I don't want it to stop. Yeah. So yeah. you still got that. You still come home. Oh right yeah, hundred percent. They get super excited because it's like, yeah, dad. Like it, it's like all this pent up energy they couldn't use. Though. They just <laughs> use it all. It me. doesn't stop until they're probably. 14, 15, 16, like okay. right around there. And then it's cool, but you're just dad. You know what I mean? You're yeah. not like the... And then when they get older, then you're cool again, right? So what I envision at like that age, So and, and so does this happen for you is, um, you know, because I get that, right? He doesn't... He, you're gonna I, tr- yeah, you, see, don't get caught up in the like, you're going to try and be cool thing. Like, oh, he's 16. I know what I'll do with him. We'll go like, you know. No, 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 no. Do something I, cool. I mean, just yeah. watching him, like, do you see so much of yourself at that point? Because I feel like that's when, like, that's when that would really start to show. Yeah, yeah, somewhat. I mean, he's got a, a lot of me, but then he's also uh, different than I am. He's more quiet than I am. I wouldn't call him an introvert. He's definitely not insecure. He'll he'll confident to talk or whatever. Mm-hmm. But he's a little different. He doesn't show... Uh, he doesn't wear his emotions and stuff on his sleeve. You were more like that. I was more expressive, I would say, uh, you know, verbally expressive. Now, okay. if you get down in a conversation, especially if you debate with him, then he won't shut up, and then you're going to go back and forth for whatever. And he's going to try and make his case all day long, which is totally, you. which is totally me, right? Yeah. yeah. But um, but no, he's a, he's a little different than I. Am. Now, my daughter's a little different. She's turning eleven actually today, and what I'm noticing with her is she's becoming more daddy's girl. So I feel like when she's a teenager, her and her mom are probably going to butt heads like crazy. 
but dad is going to be daddy. You know what I mean? And I've seen this in with my with my sisters too, to some extent. When they had their teen years, they were more like you know with dad or whatever, and fought my mom more. So. I'm hoping, you know, I'm yeah. hoping she doesn't yeah. get to the where she rolls her eyes. Oh my God, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. First question is from Nate Fagan. How effective is power building? Power building. I haven't, you know, it's popular now, right? It's not something that was around like just. A, yeah, this is like a fairly new term, uh, isn't it? No. So, okay, the first time, yeah, give, I, us the, give us the the the, the, histor- uh, the history of it. Yeah. So the first time I heard of the term power building. I heard, uh, do you guys remember Skip LaCour? I think it's his name, Skip LaCour. He was a natural, we'll do quotations, bodybuilder in the 90s, mm. kind of jacked. No. Kevin Lavroni sometimes would talk about uh, power building. And there were other bodybuilders uh, that weren't necessarily high-ranking bodybuilders, but they were popular in Flex Magazine and Muscle and Fitness that would talk about uh, power building. There's one guy in particular, I can't remember his name, It'll come to me, um, it, but he would do these insane-looking lifts where he had like seven plates on a bench press, and then there's like two spotters on each side, and he never really competed, but he called the way he trained power building. The way it tends to be used today is I like to bodybuild, but I like to use bad form and heavy weight. Oh. <laughs> is that what the way you that's think? Thanks it, for clarifying that for that, me. That's the way it tends to be used, and that's also the way that it was kind of used in the 90s. It was like heavy bodybuilding and looser form. Hmm. Now the question is that uh, reminds me of uh, who's the who's the bodybuilder that trains that way? Texas guy, uh, white dude, Branch Warren. Yes, yes, Branch Warren. Yes, exactly. Okay. Now Michael Hearn talks about power building all the time. Michael Hearn has good form. Yeah, he trains with good form. He's probably one of the most genetically gifted yeah, people on the planet. The dude was a powerlifting champion when he was in you know eighteen or whatever. Um, and when he lifts, he's just strong as shit. He'll do incline presses, full range of motion, four plates. I think he's in his late forties now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, so if you combine powerlifting and bodybuilding, what you and you do it the right way, what you're going to get is an incredible physique. You're going to be very strong. You're going to build great muscle. I think they both are extremely complementary. Now, if you power build, like I talked about earlier, uh, with just loose form and bodybuilding exercises where you're swinging things and you care more about the weight than than your technique and form. You're just probably going to hurt yourself. I think you just we just gave two great examples, right? Yeah. So Branch Warren versus Michael Hearn, and I think Branch has had all kinds of injuries and issues. Like he's always battling all kinds of stuff, and he's mm-hmm. the kind of like you know push through it type of guy who cares and then doesn't isn't really particular about his form. And then you have somebody like Michael Hearn, who's into his into his late forties, still lifting, still strong as an ox, and looks amazing. Mm-hmm. So, perfect example of what what you get if you if you take it to the extreme, right? If you take it as a way to just get away with sloppy form, versus no, there's some value in training this way, but it doesn't mean that technique goes out the window. So, what does the actual programming of a power build look like? I mean, obviously they're incorporating power lifts within that, so it's like basically just compound lifts but also like the accessory work is that am i off it's so it's usually um i'm looking to go heavy um i i'm doing curls i'm going to swing a little bit more curl the hundreds instead of the 60s a little more english involved yes um or you know there's also cases where people started out as power lifters and then moved into bodybuilding uh, ronnie coleman is an example of this well Ron- I so i don't find it that much different than that way we write programs yeah, that's right what I'm so to get at. when i think of like bodybuilding like the the typical protocol as far as programming used to be like this eight to 12 rep range, mm-hmm. you know, or even like maybe going down to six to eight reps, right? But I and I see having a power building routine with singles, doubles, and triples, or having you know, five by fives, and which is more of your power lifting type of protocol. But I mean, if you look the way we write programs, we've that's incorporated in, yeah. in almost every single program that in we write in different phases. But I'm I'm wondering if they're combining that, like they're merging them together. So you do like ones, but then you also do fit sets of fifteen, like within that same set. Well, I mean, maybe. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody who's wrote programs like that, but I mean, I think we would sit here and argue that it would it'd be way yeah. more valuable to run, run it like a mesocycle where you right. have, you know, a, a you're focused on powerlifting for a month or so, and then you move into a more bodybuilding hypertrophy type training, and then you move into a more strength or endurance type of training. So. You know, th- that's what's so funny is like it's it, a lot of this to me is 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 marketing. You know, mm-hmm. it's just totally. it's just a new a new term or a new way to look at it. But the truth is, I think both that w- both bodybuilding type you know training protocol, powerlifting type training protocol belongs in most everybody's routine. It's just 
you know, we, we tend to think of extremes of it all the time. And it's like, no, I think mm. everybody, even some, some lady who comes to me that wants to lose, you know, 50 pounds and she's 45 plus years old, she should go through a, you know, bodybuilding and a powerlifting type of routine where, which is, we're talking about tempos and rest and sets and exercises that fall in that category. That person still oh, yeah. greatly benefits from appropriate technique and uh, you know like weight that's like appropriate for them. All that stuff they're going to get great benefit from. They it. are, and they you know they, training for hypertrophy, connecting to muscles, getting the pump versus training for strength, training the movement rather than feel. Uh, you know, focusing on the big core three lifts type of deal. They complement each other uh, quite a bit. Um, and it's if you're if you really want to develop a great physique. And you do it smart, and you train smart. Um, you want to do both. You want to train in one phase, and then move into another phase. You're going to get tremendous results. Now, as you get older, um, the risk with lifting heavy might increase a little bit. In which case, you'll probably do more bodybuilding than power type lifting. Um, but for the most part, they're both extremely beneficial. Um, and look, you know, back in the day, even now before the '90s, when I was when I'm talking about what the power lift builders. Uh, all bodybuilders trained uh, for strength. That was a thing. Like, in fact, it was almost embarrassing, especially in the 40s, 50s, 60s, the 30s, those days of, of bodybuilding. It was embarrassing to, to lift weights just for looks. Nobody admitted that. It was silly. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm actually really strong. And then all of a sudden, it became okay to say, I just lift for, for looks. But, you know, Arnold used to do powerlifting cycles yeah. all the time, him, him and Franco Colombo. Mm -hmm. Next question is from Carly Osika. What value does a Zercher squat provide that a front squat doesn't? I find that the pain of holding the bar in the crook of my arms for a Zercher squat limits the weight I can lift way before my muscle strength does, so I wonder if I should just front squat instead. Yeah, a few things with this. Uh, so you'll, you'll get this argument too with uh, the wrists. So the wrists are, if you're actually performing a front squat, like a lot of people can't really, uh, they don't have the, the the mobility in the wrists to even kind of pull that off. And so they'll fold their arms and, um, you know, that. so there's different techniques. Also like with the Zercher, you know, this is where I do like recommend you probably put a pad there if that's an issue for you. Like you could solve a lot of, you know, that discomfort with just, you know, one of those pads there. But um, really like just having the weight in a different place, you're going to get a different type of recruitment uh, and you're going to receive a different benefit from that. So it's just it, look at it as a different exercise completely. It's two well, totally different exercises. Yes. Yes. The weight is in front of you on both of them. But one of them, the weight is down closer to your midline. You have a longer lever. It's not a deadlift, so it's not your full arm, but it is at the elbow. So you have a lever in front of you. It's gonna the, the different placing of the weight is gonna uh, activate and work your muscles a little bit differently. A zercher squat mimics how you tend to pick things up and lift them more than mm -hmm. even a deadlift because when you hold things. You keep it in real close. You tend to hold it real close. Um, I never did Zercher squats until um, we wrote Maps Strong, and then we put uh, Zerchers in there. Yeah, performance first. And performance, right? And I started to to do them more often. And what I noticed from them was uh, mid-back development, um, glute development. I got more glute activation with the Zercher squat than I did with the front squat, uh, for sure. It's actually Jessica's favorite squat now. Well, it's, I mean, there's a reason why it's in performance and it's in strong and it's not, we don't, it's not programmed in every other program, right? So I don't, I don't think it needs to be a, a staple exercise for everybody. But when you talk about uh, functional training, that's why it's in performance. And obviously for strong men, lifts and stuff, that type of training is extremely important to be able to pick up stones and uh, whatever the other uh, atlas, whatever the atlas stones, and what are the other yeah, and like sandbags and yeah, everything they have, else that are very centric uh, to the body. Right, it makes a ton of sense. So, and when you think about what you you know, if you were to bend over in in real life and pick up something that weighed a hundred and something pounds or more, yeah. you know, think about exactly how you would carry it. Bags, That's a, bags of concrete, bags of yeah. dog food, you know, things from Costco, you anything. Know, boxes. Even if you pick up your friend or your spouse yeah, or whatever, kids, Furn furniture, couch, right. whatever, you know, what I'm saying anything is going to be close to the midline like that you're going to hold it in tight and you're going to pick it up right so 
yeah, it's a it's a it's a very functional exercise to emulate things that you would probably do in real world. You get strong at doing that, you're less likely to hurt yourself doing one of those movements. Now, uh, talking about it for only building muscle or burning body fat, like yeah, if I had a client that that's all they cared about, they're not looking for real world functional strength, and they're saying, Adam, can I do a different exercise besides this? This bothers me so much, or I hate it. Then yeah, I would uh, I would exchange it with another movement. But obviously, if this person is doing this and it's something we program, they're following either performance or strong, which I would think you're interested in either the strong lifts and, and movements, which this obviously pertains to that, or you're interested in performance and real world strength, which is what performance is all about. Yeah. And what I like about the Zercher too is like, again, you have a barbell, so you can load that substantially. If it's a goal of yours to get really strong in that lift, like uh, the Atlas Stone is very similar in terms of like, except for you can do a little bit more rounded back lifting with that, which is challenging because not a lot of people, it's not an ideal posture to be in, but it's also important to strengthen that. Uh, to to be able to navigate through that uh, position because that's a real world position. Yeah, you're it's be in. it's uh it's the the good kind of rounded back lifting, right? Yeah. So rounded back. I'm not referring to rounded lower back or bad posture. I'm referring to the shoulder blades not being pinned back, but rather being slightly rounded forward, which is how you lift things in the real world. And that position right there, you want to get stronger too. You don't want to just have a strong back with your your shoulder blades pin back. You want them to be strong with your shoulder blades in different positions. Zercher squats encourage right. that's how I that's why I noticed I got good mid back development from yeah, it. Yeah, we're not posture robots. Next question is from Zach Tuse. What program would you recommend for someone who wants to maximize benefits while losing weight? I don't want to lift just to maintain muscle. I want to improve other things at the same time. I'd imagine something like MAPS performance would be good because it would help maintain muscle while also improving other athletic factors that won't be minimized during weight loss. Yeah, if I had to recommend one program for someone to do forever, that will give them the best of all worlds, right? You're going to get muscle, strength, you're going to get some stamina, some endurance, you're going to get mobility, you're going to reduce your risk of injury, you're going to feel really good. And, and you only could do one of our programs, it would mm -hmm. be mass performance. Yeah. It really would because it, it takes all those things into account. Now, here's the, the wonderful thing about taking all those things into account. Long term, the side effect of that is you look the best, okay? So it might not be a bodybuilding program like right. MAPS Aesthetic, but in the long term, because of the improvements in mobility, fitness, and functional strength and, and, and movement, you're going to just look better long term. You're just going to overall – be much healthier. This is something that I think is important that people consider, especially aesthetically driven people. Like if your goal is just to look good um, and that's one of your favorite aspects of fitness and you plan on working out you know, forever like you should, then you need to consider your mobility and your functional movement. You need to consider those things because if you start to lose mobility, if your functional movement starts to decline, which it will, if you don't consider them in your training, those will start to decline. You'll start to lose the benefits of your favorite exercises. You'll start to lose the benefits of a squat. You'll start to lose the benefits of a deadlift. And what'll end up happening, which I've seen many, many times in people who've been lifting for you know ten plus years, is that they end up removing exercises from their repertoire. You know, I used to be able to front squat. Now I don't anymore because it hurts this. Oh yeah, I used to bench press. Now I can't anymore. And yeah. you start taking away some of the best exercises all because you never considered mobility. It's like that repetitive stress. Like at a certain point, you keep doing the same thing over and over again in the same plane. Uh, you know, your body is going to start to respond to that negatively. Uh, and I, I do agree with this program being one of those that addresses uh, all the abilities of the human body and, and, and really like takes – takes into account joint function, joint health, movement in general. Uh, and so all those things, like if you're just focusing on that, your musculature will benefit as a result of that. And, and you know, again, your physique will be desirable, but but also like it's more long term. So it's, it's more about uh, quality, quality of uh, how I feel and how I can do things and still have abilities uh, versus just, you, you know, like I can I can be really strong or I can uh, be really buff. Uh, which are very important things as well, but this is not one of those. It's like very direct. 
expect uh, in terms of those attributes? No, we're all going to say the same thing. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, MAPS Performance is the program that I find myself going back to as far as the elements in it, right? So unilateral training in there, anti-rotational stuff in there, mobility work. When I think of how I lift today, where it's just more focused on general health, strength, good mobility, these are the things that I, I want long term. Uh, yeah, this is the single program that I think that somebody could probably run the rest of their life and be completely fine. You're going to build a great physique from it. You're going to stay, uh, stay healthy, stay fit. It's even got an endurance component in there. So you got some cardiovascular like out of it. So th th this, this program for sure is that, is that program. Although I think all of them are written in a way that you could follow them for long term and be totally fine yep. because we cycle and phase everything. Uh, this one I think addresses a lot of stuff that I, I remember having to address with all my, my clients. Next question is from Grant Satterswaite. When following a program, when is it advisable to go off script for the sake of fun? Oh, well, fun is great when it comes to exercise. Even if it slows down your progress in the short term, if you learn to enjoy exercise, the the likelihood that, you that you'll do it consistently and long term is, is much higher. I mean, I used to use this example with my clients all the time because they would always ask me questions like, you know, what's more effective, like riding a stationary bike or walking on the treadmill on an incline? Or what's more effective, working out in the morning or working out in the afternoon? I said, okay. I said, look, here's the deal. Let's say waking up at 4 a.m. and swimming in a cold lake was twice as effective than, uh, you know, going for walks, uh, you know, after work with your kids. Um, does that mean you're going to do it more consistently? Is that what's, is it going to be more effective or is it, be, or are you going to stop doing it because it's 4am and it's a cold lake? So when it comes to having fun, that's a very important component, uh, with exercise. If you enjoy what you're doing, again, you're more likely to keep, to keep doing it. And so I think if you're, if you're thinking long term, going off the script to enjoy yourself, probably always a great idea. Now, if you're a, a, if you have a timeline, if you're an athlete, if you are going to compete at a particular time, if you have a very specific goal, well, sometimes going off script for the sake of fun might not be a good idea. You know, if I if I'm a bodybuilder, I'm going to be on stage in four weeks, and I rather than going to the gym to work my back, I'm like, you know, it'd be more fun if I went, you know, mountain bike riding. Maybe not a good idea because that'll hurt my my score on stage. But otherwise. I think this is a good thing for most people. Now, what I what we typically recommend is for most people, if you, for example, let's say you signed up for one of our, our workout programs, the first time through, follow it like it's laid out. The second time around, start making changes. Listen to your body. Do things you might find a little bit more fun. Start to learn your body. That's such an important uh, part of uh, longevity when it comes to fitness. I think that... Uh this is I off the script and fun is how I train all the time. The only time that I was uh, like following something to a T was competing. Uh, and for the reasons that you just alluded to was, uh, you know, I had a time frame. I had to, I had to improve my physique uh, every single time I got back on stage and I had a small window between every show. And so there was uh, every day counted every, every, everything I ate counted, every workout counted, uh, and you know, the, and that's what makes it like a sport, like, you know, cause I'm competing against other people. Anybody else who didn't treat it that way probably didn't do as well. Um, but for real life and, and enjoying the gym and training, oh, I think it's important to do this. I think, it, I think you should do this more often than not. You just got to know that. So it's, it's okay that if, and then we talk about this on the show a lot, right? Sometimes, um, a, a workout for me, it might be literally the whole hour is, is centered around squatting. Uh, me getting down and doing some 90-90 stuff, then going doing a set, and then assessing how my movement is, then going back and doing some combat stretch, and then going back to the squat, and then assessing how my, my squat is again, and then maybe doing some single leg stuff to prime, or doing some jump box stuff to get me, and playing with an exercise for an entire hour to see how I can improve it, and 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 really pay attention to where my breakdown is, like, I like that, I enjoy that, or you know, an exercise like the Turkish get up, which, you know, some people think is a waste of time. And we talk about it was all the values and the benefits of getting good at it. So maybe my training for a while sometimes is all about the Turkish get up, like everything about making the Turkish get, which means 
I'm doing all that and anything else that I do is to complement that. So if for for example, if I go to do a Turkish get up and I lack good, uh, my shoulder is not, I'm not holding the kettlebell above my head right because of my shoulder mobility. So then the other exercises I'm doing is to get more mobile shoulders so I can be better at my Turkish get up. Like now training this way, I know I'm not building the most muscle I possibly can that week or I'm not burning the most body fat. But what I do care about is that it's benefiting me. It's it's giving me a new goal or a focus, and it's fun. And it's what keeps me always coming back to the gym, and it makes it easy to be consistent because it doesn't always have to translate into the scale and my body fat percentage and how much weight is on the bar. Mm -hmm. I, so I, I think this is a very important uh, aspect of training. I think most of us should train in the fun place. Mm -hmm. But I do agree with Sal that – I think it's very important that everybody follows something that's been that it's been written by a professional first. So you so you understand like what good programming does for your body if you want to make quicker or faster changes and how your body should feel when its pro exercises are programmed correctly and sets and reps and you cycle in and out of phases so you know what that's like. And then after you under got a good concept of that, then I encourage this way of training. Yeah, the, the truth is people who constantly work out to hit a goal are not nearly as consistent long-term as people who work out because they enjoy the workout. Yeah. So remember that uh, for yourself. Uh, it's great to have goals. It's great to want to hit those goals. But what's going to keep you consistent long-term or forever is that you enjoy what you're doing. Well, it's the difference with really like turning that into a lifestyle. Or, or not. And, and it, again, it, I can't help but think it's it's sports, like going into it, like looking at a very specific thing that I have to do. And so you're very rigid and in, in being disciplined uh, because, you know, it's all riding, uh, you know, around this type of work that you put into now to then perform. If you don't have that kind of restriction and that kind of timeline and temp, like it's, it's crucial to, to add uh, fun things uh, to mix it up just because like it's all about frequency. It's all about about, uh, you know, constantly, uh, you know, moving your body uh, and, and that's what's going to pay off long term. Mm, excellent. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. So you can come watch us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find us all over social media, uh, including Instagram and now also on Parlor. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam and Doug at Mind Pump Doug. Uh, I go on there and I'm just looking at comments because I haven't visited in a while. Uh -huh. And so, <laughs> some asshole puts, he goes, yeah, I've been listening to these guys for a long time. You, you'd think they were jacked, but they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. I was like, wow, I, think dude. I was going for the jugular. Wow, dude. Yeah. I was like, I feel 